All right. Hello and welcome to another Expert Inside interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop, online sales magazine and Pipeliner CRM. Joining you from San Diego as usual. And today I'm joined by Bill Coletti, who is in Austin, Texas. How are you doing, Bill? I'm very good, John. And yourself? Yeah, very good. And Bill is the CEO of Kith. Bill is a reputation management crisis communication and professional development expert. Um, and uh, the best-selling author of Critical Moments, A New Mindset of Reputation Management. So you have over 25 years experience managing high stakes, crisis and issues and all of that. And let's face it, today we're, we're, in, a, we're in probably one of the first ever collective crises the world has ever seen. And whether you're a large corporate multinational global corporation or whether you're a small local business, uh, you have to work your way through this crisis, but you have to manage your reputation, right, during this crisis as well about how you react and everything. So how does a crisis like this, how can it impact a company's reputation? And what are some of the things you can do to mitigate any like negative reputational damage? Yeah, you know, it's, it's a terrific question. You know, I think a lot of organizations are, have always struggle with reputation management. How do we manage a reputation and what exactly does that mean? We think about it in the context of crisis communications is that if you have a crisis, that's a relatively finite moment in time. But we talk about critical moments. Or that's what we think we're in right now. This is a series of critical moments. And that organizations aspire to have a good reputation for a couple of reasons. They want to, if they're in a B2B sales type environment, they want to break ties. All things being equal, the company with a strong reputation is going to win. They want to maintain their license to operate. They want to open up a new store. They want to open up a new facility. They don't want government or anybody else to get in their way. Or they want to be an employer of choice. And so I think that companies need to make smart moves right now just simply to do the right thing for those that matter most to their, to their organization. A crisis, I find you know, the American public, and you know, to a certain extent the global public, mm -hmm. is very forgiving in a crisis. But it's a critical moment is where people really screw up. And if you rush in, if we're rushing back to reopen, if you're not thinking about your employees, so the stakes for your reputation is really critical over the long term. Yeah, and I guess part of it is um, that you're seen to be obviously balancing out all the different aspects of it. But I think uh, one of the big things, and I think this is where um, this whole crisis, I think, I mean, particularly in the U.S., as you know, has come unstuck a little bit. It's because of the, the communication, right? There's, there's a lot of conflicting, you know, messages out there. So as a company, um, even as a small business or a large business, how you communicate with your employees and the world at large is critical at a time like this. Absolutely. And we talk about it in the context of ABC. Always be mm -hmm. communicating is that too many organizations decide to sort of clam up right now when there's uncertainty and unsure, and they're not sure of what to do or what to say next. But we, have, we think that you always have to be communicating and you always have to be communicating to those that matter most. I don't particularly like the word stakeholder, so I use those mm -hmm. that matter most. It's a little bit right. cleaner term. And so you always have to be sharing with them, but you don't have to share with them answers. It's okay to say our current best view our current plans, or here's what we're thinking, is that people have this desire that, you know, that, that leadership is all about decisiveness. And yes, that's an important part of leadership, mm -hmm. but this is a really difficult time to actually be decisive. We don't know if schools are gonna open, yeah. and just when you and I are recording this, both Los Angeles and San Diego, and I think of other, other cities across the country are figuring out what to do with school. And so it's mm -hmm. hard to be a leader to your employees if you don't even know if their kids are going to have daycare or childcare or schools or what have you. And it's okay to be the leader that says our current best view is that we want everybody back in the office by Labor Day, but we're going to be flexible and, and watch what's going on. So I was on the phone with one of our CEO clients um, earlier this week and he was, or excuse me, yesterday on today. And he was talking about this New York times article talking about how governors are really being tested right now by a natural disaster, typically hurricanes, mm -hmm. but that COVID is really testing them. And one of the things that's really critical in what's happening to elected officials is they're getting caught in this vice between science and economics. And if you can avoid getting stuck in that place and really focus on your organization, don't get caught up in the politics, that's mm -hmm. how you can protect your reputation because those are gonna be the companies we're gonna to wanna to deal with long-term. 
Yeah, and I think those are those are great points. And as you said, I mean, obviously avoid getting caught up in the politics. But I think there's a certain refreshing trust building when somebody, as you say, when somebody says, "This is our this is our position right now, based on on what we can see in in, in at the current situation. This is what we're hoping to do." Right. And right. that may change. Our current best view. This is our current yeah. best view. This is absolutely, and and we get credibility. There's nothing wrong with that. Yeah, because let's face it. If I if I stood there, or if I make any definitive statements right now about things that I couldn't possibly know anything about, or that are just like pie in the sky, I mean, that's not helping anybody. No, it's really not because we're seeing people that have done that, and we're now reversing course. Mm -hmm. You know, because the, certainly in a COVID situation. And then we also just see it in other critical moments, other crises, events, is that you know what you know, and then you know, there are lots that you don't know. Um, and that's where really the sophisticated discipline comes in, is talk about the things you know, and don't necessarily opine on the things you don't know. Um, and people yeah. are patient and understanding because we all are confused right now. Um, is that you just don't really try to avoid saying foolish things. Yeah. And the, and the point that you made a few minutes ago is obviously as leaders of an organization is you have to take into account things right now um, that are affecting your employees that maybe in the normal way you wouldn't have to. I mean, you just alluded there to, to daycare and stuff. Normally in the normal way, you wouldn't really be spending your time thinking about, you know, do my employees, do they have daycare for their kids, do their kids going to school? You wouldn't be thinking about those things. But now you have to take into account all of these things. So it requires you to show that you're at least acknowledging that those issues exist. Absolutely. It's holistic management. I mean, you're managing the whole person. I mean, we've talked about that in years past and it never really, it kind of was given lip service, but now it actually means something. You know, we really need to be engaged. And certainly then from a, from a sales context, that's also the case is that there may not be a lot of selling going on, but there can certainly be a lot of caring. You can care mm -hmm. about people and that's, that's, you know, you'll know better than me, but that's not a bad foundation to do really great sales is actually caring about people. So yes, I think we need to be a lot 360 in the way we think about things. Yeah. And I mean, I think uh, I'm right now, I mean, if you're, if you're a salesperson right now, you have, this is a great time to reach out to people and you know, not necessarily try and sell to them, but, uh, but to talk to them and understand what their situation is and learn a little bit about it. Because people, I think people crave communication right now and they crave authenticity and they crave that kind of a little bit of more of a humanization of everything. I think that's one of the, the byproducts of where we are. I think that was happening anyway pre-crisis because I think people were getting a bit tired of technology being put in the way of everything. I think people were craving a little bit more and now this has been accentuated by the crisis. And to your earlier point, I think that's exactly what our employees are wanting. And, and mm -hmm. you know, we're selling to our employees. We're selling yep. a new initiative. We're selling, you know, new KPIs, new performance standards. And so it's the same philosophy uh, is, is just applied to a different audience. So I think organizations are learning those lessons, not just in, 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 a, in a sales financial context, but just simply in human interaction. And those are the organizations that are going to grow their reputation. And those are the organizations that I think are going to be stronger on the backside mm -hmm. of this. So what are some of the th what are some of the characteristics or, or that you're seeing from the best uh, leaders that you work with about how they're handling the situation and maybe some things that other people could learn from? Yeah. So it's a couple of things we think are really important. And, and so we think in, in these moments, the key differentiator, particularly in a crisis specifically, the key differentiator between good and great is speed. How fast mm -hmm. do you actually respond in the marketplace? And we've got a formula. We think that speed equals mission and values plus chain of command. And that's how you actually get to speed. So I think the companies that are doing the best stand for something from a, from a mission standpoint and who their core and their purpose is, and that they are really clear on their chain of command because these moments create all kinds of outside experts, inside counsel, outside counsel, different departments. And I'm agnostic on the chain of command, but let's just at least label it. You know, there's a particular board member that's really concerned and they always lean in. So speed is the key differentiator. Being the organizations that are doing best are true to their mission and values. They have their purpose. They're employee centered or they are bottom line centered. It doesn't really matter. Just be true to it. And then they're really clear on sort of their chain of command and the way they make decisions. So I think that Starbucks um, has done a really nice job and they, they continue to do a good job um, of really being true to who they are and, and standing out. 
Um, we've got a couple of smaller clients that people don't necessarily haven't really heard of, but they have been just super focused on their team um, and, and almost to almost at the exclusion of their customers because, and, 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 and I know that sounds odd on a sales mm-hmm. podcast, but, but they're, t- they know that at the end of the day, their customers will be there. They really need to focus on their team. And so that's all about their mission. They've always been very missionally focused around their team. So I think companies that are doing it right are those that know why they're doing what they do with clear purpose. And it comes through, uh, in their actions. I think healthcare is doing a great job generally. Mm-hmm. Um, I think some some providers are getting caught up into some payment models and goofy things like that. But I think mm-hmm. generally healthcare is doing a really nice job. Aviation is all screwed up. Aviation has no yeah. idea what what to do next. Uh, and I get it from internal pressures, but I also get it from a cultural standpoint. They've never been particularly good at that stuff. No, no. And as somebody who had to make an emergency trip uh, overseas during this crisis, I can tell you that, uh, yeah, they don't have a clue what they're doing. No, and it's, um, it's sad because it is a, it's yeah. something. We all need well, it's, because, yeah. yeah, it's an essential yeah. service for all of us. So it is sad that they um, that they don't really know what they're doing right now. But I'm sure they'll figure it out in time. But you know, <laughs> see, and the thing you mentioned about chain of command is interesting because I think that's a thing that people often overlook and don't, not realize that you know when a crisis situation happens, yeah, you you suddenly get people, and maybe with the best of intentions, you know, they want to help, and sometimes so they break the chain of command or they insert themselves somewhere or they they end up uh, maybe um, skewing the communication because they're not, they don't know the full facts. Yeah, no, it's absolutely, absolutely the case. And so having clarity around that and it's, and I talk about it both formally and informally, there's both Mm -hmm. contexts to it is that, yeah, there are people that sort of, you know, got to figure out who do you trust? You got to figure out who you trust in this critical moment and in this crisis, because just because you fit perfectly on the pyramid org chart, you know, it doesn't necessarily mean your voice is equivalent uh, to everybody else's voice. And some people's voices are disproportionately large than others. <laughs> you got to know that in advance and just label it and know it and own it and understand it. So, so, it's, so it's obviously part of the, the, part of what the leader needs to do is reinforce with people, here's who should be saying what, and here's who should be communicating, or here's the official channels. Please don't go outside that. Please like, you know, stick to the, the plan. Yes, uh, that's that. That is the case, but it's also really good to be so clear and succinct with what you're saying, mm-hmm. so that everybody's on the same song sheet, and so it doesn't really mm-hmm. matter at that point. That that from your sales organization to your customer service organization, to just to simply to the folks that answer the phone at the front desk, they get it. They know what we're saying because what we're saying is so clear, is that it doesn't require that rigor that maybe you're envisioning. But I think from mm-hmm. when we're talking about a core yeah. issue, a, a disaster, a moment, a critical moment or a crisis, yes. But I think in what are we doing around our mission, that can actually be distilled a lot sim- more simply and that everybody sings off the same song, song sheet. That's success mm-hmm. when you can get there. Yeah, and I, I like that idea of the clear, succinct communications. Everybody's on the same page. So maybe a good exercise for everybody is, and it doesn't, re- and regardless of the politician of whatever side of the spectrum they're on, but you can certainly watch their statements of, of recent times and realize that um, after that, you have no clue what they actually really said or really meant. So just do the opposite. <laughs> yeah, be, yeah, yeah, that's, that's probably not a bad, not bad guidance. <laughs> just do the opposite of what we're got, what's going on right now. That's very yeah. true. Yeah. So, um, so what can um, you? Know, what What are some of the things that um, you know? Large businesses often have really good, you know, crisis management, and they um, and they have like resources to throw at things and all that. But what can what can small businesses learn who are maybe and maybe they're for the first time going through something like this where they've never had to uh, to react in the way that they have to react now? Yeah, I'll answer it in a in a COVID context and then in a mm-hmm. non COVID context. You know, I think right now is just speak the truth and be human and just care. We're all confused and we're all a lot of, I don't know, you know, scared. I don't know if we're scared, but we're certainly confused about what's going to come next. It's just, just speak your truth. I think that's what you do in a COVID context, perhaps in a less ephemeral and more of a practical way. um, What we've often advised small companies, big companies, all of our different folks that we work with is to pull out the New York Times and the Wall Street Journal, open it up and say, if that had happened to us, what if, what would we do? Mm. How would we respond? And just do a simple little mini training 
at your staff meeting, weekly, monthly, quarterly, whenever your staff meeting is, and just say, if that had happened to us, if, that, if we had gotten that phone call from a reporter, how would we respond? What would we have done? Um, I guarantee that on any given day, the Wall Street Journal or the New York Times or just about anybody else, you can identify a topic that is really, really relevant to your organization and just ask, what if that had happened to us? COVID, we're all dealing what if. We're, we don't know what's going to happen tomorrow. Um, but I think you can learn about what if, what if, should we reopen? What if we don't reopen? How do we manage our employees? So I think you can, can do the similar what if scenario planning. Yeah, no, I love I love that idea of like looking up, um, you know, seeing other crises and say, what would we do? I mean, we do fire drills for goodness sakes, but we're you know, in the regular case, right? So this is just actually doing a, f doing some fire drills for your company based on scenarios, which I, I really like that. Uh, Absolutely, it that makes concept. everybody better. And back to the mm -hmm. chain of command, you'll learn that you know, you know, Roger's ideas are consistently bad. So I'm not mm -hmm. going to listen to Roger's ideas. <laughs> or, or Sally really yeah. says great things. And that's not yeah. who within my, maybe they're not in the org chart, but in that informal chain of command, yeah. that's how you learn things like that. And that's how you mm -hmm. learn if your mission and values are BS or if they're really real. And so it's nice, simple testing. Doesn't take an elaborate, you know, crisis scenario to work out. Just ask mm -hmm. yourself, what if this had happened to us? What would we do? Yeah, and I think the other one in the in the context of 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 COVID and stuff right now is another thing is like as you said, is you know whether people are scared or whether they're you know apprehensive or just don't know what's happening or they're frustrated that this is going on is a lot of different people have a lot of different emotions and normally you're not dealing with that range of <laughs> of different emotions and someone's stronger maybe one person's super scared maybe another person's super frustrated or whatever, so. Obviously, then to your point is you just have to be really forthright and honest and, and empathetic as far as you can be, knowing that you're not going to satisfy everybody. Yeah, no, that's absolutely the case. And that comes back to mission and values. Who mm -hmm. really matters most? Okay. The folks that are trying to please all the people all the time are the ones that get it wrong. But the folks yeah. that have made a conscious decision, we are going to choose shareholders over customers or mm -hmm. customers over shareholders whatever that decision is. And, and I think the, the, the way I like matters most better than stakeholders, the stakeholders yeah. creates equivalency. Matters most means no, I'm making a conscious choice that I'm gonna choose one or the other. And it makes decision-making a lot more clear when you do it yeah. that way. Yeah, and I, th and I think that, that, that's such a, such a profound point because I do think that that's where the problems come from and we've seen it, I think is when people are trying to satisfy not even just two audiences, maybe five audiences at the same time. And it's, it's, it's an impossible thing to do. It is. So speak to the ones that matter most, and then hopefully everybody else will come along. Um, we see it in, in, in with our corporate clients is that we write multiple sets of talking points for multiple mm -hmm. different audiences. And I'm like, if we say one, if we say a couple of really, really good things, it'll work for lots of different audiences. Yeah, and I think that gets back to your point earlier about being clear and succinct and, exactly. and being clear and succinct about the things that you can be and then the things that you can't be, just admitting that you can't, you know. But I used to do this actually when, when I ran some companies. I used to say when I would say, you can ask me a qu any question and if I, can, if I have the answer to it, I will give you that straight, I'll give you a straight answer. The only time I won't is when I either don't know the answer and I'll tell you that or I'm not permitted to share that piece of information with you. And then I'll also tell you that. Yeah. And, but, but, but again, I, you know, we all, we all, we are all salespeople in life, but you probably have mm -hmm. greater ex expertise than I do, but we are afraid to do that. We are afraid to have that clarity because somebody won't think we're the expert or somebody mm -hmm. won't think, but it's the, actually my experience is it's the exact opposite. Yeah. Those are the people I want to work with that are like, oh, so you're really not BSing me? No, I, I simply don't know, or I, unfortunately, I can't tell you. Oh, well, that's mm -hmm. refreshing. It is, and I think that's such a, a huge trust building, especially when you look to somebody as a, uh, you know, you respect them and their expertise, and when they turn around and tell you that, mm, no, I don't know, I really don't know the answer to but that. But I'll find uh, out. I mean, you can add yeah, lots of other yeah. things to it. I'll find out, I'll get back to you, whatever the case may be. Um, but no, I remember sitting with a CEO early in my career consulting, where I just, didn't know what I didn't know. I simply <laughs> didn't know. And I just said that. And she said, remember this moment because this will take you really far to be yeah. able to have the confidence to say that. And it was in a, in a, in a communicate, you know, a, a strategic context. Mm -hmm. And, and um, 
that was very valuable, very poignant to me to have a leader that does yeah. that. No, and it's great. And I think it's so refreshing. It's very trust building. And, and if you look at the flip side of it is when you try, and as you say, to BS your way out of it, you just end up digging a hole and having to go further and further and further, trying to sort of pretend that you know what you don't know. And that's never a good situation. Right. right. Absolutely. Yep. Yeah. That's ab absolutely the case. And so, you know, that goes back, again, back to mission and values. If you're clear with who matters most and you're clear with why you do what you do, those answers become a lot easier. You don't have to make it up as you go along. <laughs> Absolutely. Listen, Bill, this has been great, uh, Bill Coletti. All of Bill's information will be in his contributor bio um, below all the links. But before we go, Bill, please do tell everybody about your organization and what you do and how they can learn more. Yeah, so our company's name is Kith, um, and our website is, is kith.co, and we do crisis communications and reputation management. Uh, we really are focused on, you know, being at our best when people are at their worst, when organizations really find themselves at the intersection of public expectation um, and their strategy, and we try to help them get back on course. Yeah, I love that. And Kith is, uh, I'm just reading off your website, a, it's a noun, it's a cadre of people, of peers who shape opinions and attitudes while instilling sophisticated habits for action. Very good. So John, I'd ask you the question, are you familiar with the phrase, I'm going home this weekend to visit my Kith and my kin? Have you heard that? Yes, I am. So yeah, yeah, kin is obviously my family. Yeah. Those are the people that you're going home to visit. But your kith are those original friends that taught you sophisticated habits. So we're all, as humans, are made up by imprints on our family, and we're also made up of imprints on our original friends. And so whether these are the, the friends at university or the friends in high school or the friends wherever that taught you to go out for the National Honor Society or be on the football team or smoke under the bleachers or whatever the habits were, <laughs> these are the folks that did that. And so we, we can't be people's family, but we can be people's kith and try to teach them sophisticated habits. Uh, and, those, and that's the, the people that we want to work with. Well, that's great because I, 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 I've used that phrase kith and kin many times. And to be honest, um, they're an admission from me. I knew the kin part, but never knew the kith part. Yeah, it comes, you know, we use it in English, we use couth. I mean, we, we use it in typically uncouth. We say, you know, mm -hmm. Bob is uncouth. The opposite of couth or op opposite of uncouth is actually sophisticated. Mm. So yeah, think yeah that's true. And kith, that's where it all sort of came from that same root of the word. And so I was fascinated when I found the word. And that's exactly the type of firm that we have and exactly what we want to try to do. I love it. All right. Listen, thanks very much, Bill. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop Online, Sales Magazine and Pipeliner CRM. I'll see you for another expert interview really soon. Thank you.